certainly my pleasure to introduce this guy. Uh, I met him mm, four years ago, uh, pretty much today. And uh, he's got an interesting story to tell about his part in World War II. Um, he was a bomber pilot. Uh, he's from New Jersey originally. New Jersey originally. Uh, he and I are members of the American Veterans Association in our hometown, Washington Township, in New Jersey. But without further ado, I'd like to introduce Marty Fleischer, my friend, World War II veteran. Uh, well, I see that I'm probably the oldest guy here. Nobody probably knows how old I am, but just to let you know, I'm 90 years old. I was 90 years old last month. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> In other words, you celebrated your 45th for the second time. <laughs> True. <laughs> now, I, I came from a, a fairly large family. My father died when, he was six, when I was six years old, and as a result, the... My mother was left with three, three children, and uh, two years after my father died, she married a widower with three children, and that made six, and subsequently there were two more, so we were eight, and I was the oldest of the eight. And therefore, I was like a, a, almost a father for the children, because my, uh, my stepfather was in the wholesale produce business, and during the summer months he was hardly at home, because he went down to South Jersey to buy fruits and vegetables and come back to the farmer's market and stay all night to sell them. And the next morning went back down to South Jersey to buy some more, and that went on all week long. The only time we saw him was Fridays and Saturdays, and that was it. So uh, it was, uh, and it was all during the Depression, and it was pretty tough. Now when the, world, when the, world, uh, uh, the war started, I was drafted, but uh, I always wanted to be a pilot. And when the war came along, uh, I tried to sign up for, for pilot training, but I didn't have any college education at, at the time. They only accepted uh, applicants or applications from anyone who had, had at least two years of college education or, or the equivalency of such. After um, boot training and so forth, they sent me to an uh, airplane mechanic school at Keesler Airfield in, uh, in Mississippi. And I went through airplane mechanic school there. I was usually a very pa a bad student in high school. I hated school and I never wanted to go. But when I went to mechanic school at Keesler Air Force Base, I was second in the class of 300. After, the, after I graduated Keesler Air Force Base, they sent me to Glen L. Martin plant in, uh, up in, uh, in Baltimore, Maryland. And uh, they were grooming me for, uh, for a crew chief. And I was to be a crew chief on a B-26. So they sent me to Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio waiting for assignment. And uh, for some reason or another, it, three months went by and nothing happened. I didn't get any assignment. And I decided, well, I'm going to try for airplane training, air, uh, for pilot training again. And this time when I took the test, I passed it. And they sent me away to flying training. And finally, I went through, through all the training and I graduated as a pilot. October 1st of 1943 and then we moved almost within a week or two we moved to uh, to Savannah Georgia where we where we had our where we received our airplanes we were assigned to various squadrons and so forth and uh, we started our training there we trained trained there and then uh, uh, until February of 1944 we, we left the United States in February of 44, and, uh, excuse me, and uh, we flew our own airplanes over to Europe. As it was a custom, it, during the winter months, they flew the airplanes on a southern route, which was across the Caribbean, across, and parts of uh, South America, across the South Atlantic to Africa, and then from Africa up to England. And during the summer months, they sent them on a northerly, northerly route from uh, across Greenland, across the, the North Atlantic to, uh, to, I don't know if they landed in Iceland, where they landed, but anyway, eventually in, in England. We went, when we took the southern route, we had to leave from the easternmost part 
of South America, which was a town of Belém. And from there, go to the Ascension Islands. Ascension Islands, an island in the middle of the Atlantic between Africa and South America. But first, of course, you cross the, you cross the equator. Now, we didn't know it, but the equator was about two hours of flying time, flying blind. Of course, we were in clouds for two hours during that flight. Now, we never had anything like that. We had practiced uh, instrument flying, but the thing is, never had never did it in, uh, in real life, but this was, was the first test that we had. Now we left Belém, and all the, we had navigators assigned to us, of course we went with a short crew of only four people. The airplane normally carried six people. And when we had our briefing by the briefing officer, all the navigators complained we're not going to make it over, we're not going to make it to the Ascension Islands, because they, with their calculations, we wouldn't have enough fuel in order to get to the Ascension Islands with all the fuel consumption and you know the rate of fuel consumption the amount of fuel and so forth and the briefing officer poo-pooed the whole thing and he said look we've sent thousands of airplanes already we haven't lost a one so you can make it so we get up and we start out <clears throat> and we're up about three hours and the estimated time was supposed to be probably about seven hours or so and uh, we're up about three hours and we had to try to transfer some fuel because we carried spare tanks, what they called bomb bay tanks, instead of bombs. We had 250 in one tank and 250 in another tank. Now, as soon as you use up some of the gasoline in your, in your main tanks, you're supposed to transfer from the bomb bays to the main tanks so that you can keep going. And then as your main tanks go down, you still add some more fuel from the bomb bays and you do that first before you take anything out of the auxiliary tanks because we had four four tanks in the wings so as we're flying and after about three hours I start checking the uh, checking the fuel transfer system by checking the gauges we had six gauges on one on a turntable you turn the knob and you get six readings of six tanks and something didn't seem right so I called the engineer Ford and tell him and told him that we're, we don't seem to be getting all the gasoline in the tanks the way we were supposed to. And he took a look out of the window and he saw that all the gasoline was going into one auxiliary tank, which was full, so it was pouring out of the, out of the uh, vent. So that was 250 gallons that we couldn't get out of one tank. How much of it we lost, I don't know, but we still couldn't get it out of that tank because that tank wasn't transferring properly. So we switched to the other tank and the other tank was was felt flowing properly and, fill, and filling up the, the main tanks. So we couldn't decide whether we should return or continue going because we were on, on the border of 50-50, which would be better. Well, because I was a mechanic and I knew a little bit more about the operation of the airplane, I started thinning back on the, on the fuel air mixture. And you have com complete control of everything in the airplane. You had you control for your fuel air mixture, you had control of your propeller pitch and the RPM and so forth. It's just like driving a car. When you go into sixth gear, you go to lower RPM. So you fly at 1,850 RPM instead of the 2,100, which you're supposed to fly at. At the same time, by pulling back on the fuel-air mixture, the engine starts to run with more air and less gasoline. And I kept pulling back on it until the engine would cough. And I wait a little while. And then I'd try another one. It'd sputter once or twice, and I'd left it that way. Until I felt it was safe enough to, to fly that way, we flew at 1,850 RPM, just like putting it into sixth gear in a car. Well, when we got to the Ascension Islands, we called in, we asked if we could come in directly instead of flying an air pattern, which you normally have to fly before you land. So they said we could come right in. We went in. When they checked it all out, they found that one of the valves in our transfer system had stuck and it wouldn't allow the proper transfer from that one Bombay tank. And as a result of what I did as far as thinning out the mixture and changing the, the, uh, the RPM and so forth, we had more gasoline in our airplane than anybody else did. <laughs> so, and it turned out it was an excellent le lesson for us when we flew a couple of combat missions in particular. <clears throat> 